Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson and today we are checking out the Thunk 3D Figure S 3D Scanner. So yes, this is a handhold 3D scanner, which is used to scan objects, of course. But it's quite similar to the Cooper M20, or it's similar, it's from the same brand, Thunk 3D. The Cooper M20 that you saw me review up here, or down there, or wherever you want to check that out. This is a handheld version, which means that you can actually take this around and scan around objects. So we're going to do that today. Um, this is my summary, this is my review of this machine. I've been trying it out for, I think, two months soon. Well, let's check out the plus and, and downs. So let's just go through the whole complete review. So this is a prosumer or a professional type of 3D scanner. It aims to scan objects. So it's a part scanner. It's not really meant to scan people or um, profiles of people. It's possible to scan some parts of a human, but it's very difficult to scan a complete person. It doesn't have color as well, so it's not for scanning miniatures and stuff like that. So the Fisher S offers a scanning volume of around five centimeters for the smaller objects. It can of course get better details than that, but that's like the minimum part size that they recommend. And they claim it can scan up to a 500 centimeter part as well, which is is quite a lot. Uh, I haven't been able to manage that. I printed some bi pretty big parts like a, a one meter gearbox that I'll show you guys later. Um, but it's not, I wouldn't scan like a complete car with this. I'm sure if you put down the time and get the markers down and you have a good computer, it's gonna work. Uh, I'm, I'm not doubting that. It's just that I haven't really tested the bigger parts. The resolution is actually really impressive. It gets down to 0 0.04 millimeters. And that actually is, is, a, is a difficult value to relate to. But basically what you're doing is that when you get one frame, one scan, the mesh precision and resolution of that is supposed to be down to 0 0.04 millimeters. The mesh that you're getting out has uh, around 0.1 millimeter between each triangle. So if you wanna do like a small hole, like an M3 hole, that's gonna be very difficult to get exactly right because it's still the mesh that you're getting the data from. It's the data or the raw points that the scanner is basing that data on is uh, high resolution. So yes, you can scan mechanical parts like I've done here, uh, it's super interesting and it gets good results on that and it gets precise results, but it also depends a little bit on the scanning mode that you're using. So the Fisher S scanner utilizes two cameras and one projector. So you have two cameras up here. They each have a LED light around them. I'm not sure exactly why, because you're not getting texture data, but they have. And you also have the projector in the middle and the projector projects this pattern that the two cameras will look at and create a depth image or a 3D image from. So that's done a few times a second, around three or four times a second. So then reconstructing a complete model of all that data. So it's, it's like, taking a lot of snapshots of 3D images and then that is combined into a 3D model. So the field of view is pretty interesting for a scanner to have because uh, the narrower field of view, the harder you're going to uh, get. If you shake the scanner, it's gonna be harder to track. So this scanner actually use a FOV of 300 by 180 millimeters. So that's a pretty decent area. Uh, you can also use a like high resolution mode that narrows that the area down to 120 by uh, 100 millimeters. So if you're doing smaller parts, you can use that high detail mode, but you have to be even more stable on the hand when you're scanning. So uh, using the three or four inches per second is, it's fairly slow. It's not as fast as other scanners, but it, I guess that's limitations in software and, and whatever it is. But it results in that it's a little bit more tricky to hand scan. So you, you need some practice, you need to get the tracking in, you don't want to shake the scanner, uh, because the more you move it around uh, per second, that means that it has to navigate more, uh, fewer images to track itself. It all means that uh, it's a little bit more sensitive for uh, unstable movements when you're scanning. So it takes a little bit of practice, that's it. 
it all turns out that when you're doing a scan, it, it also means that it's reading a little bit slower, which, which means that you have to scan for a little bit longer, puts a little bit more stress on you. There's a lot of data per second, but you're not covering a lot of areas per second. So you're getting a lot of overlapping, which means that you need to have a pretty beefy computer to handle the scanner. So they recommend a pretty beefy computer. The minimum specs are eight gigabytes of RAM, which is fairly low. I would say at least 16, hopefully 32. You need a NVIDIA card with at least two gigabytes of VRAM. I'm using a NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti for mine, which works fantastically on this laptop. But I mean, you can even get the new one. Ones. That, that's better. So no Mac, no Apple usage for this one. Sorry guys. So something that really helps when you're scanning, a really good feature is that it has these two laser dots. It projects two laser dots and they converge on the focus point, which means that it's very, uh, you're getting a really, really good real time um, estimation of where you're supposed to be. Because again, if you think about this scanner as a camera, you have two cameras going in an angle and where they meet is where you have the best scanning area. So you wanna be, make sure that your scanner is always close to that area. And so when these two laser dots converge, that means that you're spot on, that, that's the perfect distance. And I, I haven't seen this in other types of scanners. It's a really good feature to make sure that you as an operator don't have to look at the screen and, and detect all of these different uh, things while you're scanning. You can actually focus on scanning the object, getting slow and stable movements. So the software is very similar to the Cooper M20 scanner that I reviewed before, which means that it's, it's a interesting software. It's not the most user friendly. Uh, it has the features that you need, but it takes a little bit of time of learning on how to navigate the software. So with the scanner setup, all you really want to do is that you first set up the um, uh, prior type so you can designate what kind of field of view that, you, that you want to use. You also don't have to change the uh, exposure of the scanner. So you have three presets to choose from, darker, normal, or bright object, basically. And that, that helps setting the exposure times and the projector strength of the camera. And it's really important to, depending on what, what kind of objects you're scanning. Again, this is something that I really want to have more features in. I want to see better uh, visual, better uh, real time. Um, feedback on how good your exposure settings are. So that's something we've seen in other scanners is really good, but I'm, I'm waiting for them to implement it here as well. Luckily, it's only software, so should be able to uh, be developed. You also have to choose what kind of scanning mode you want to use. So I've, I've talked about the scanning modes before. You have the marker mode, which means that you have these reflective markers that the object tracks. It's a much better, much more precise scanning, but it takes a long time to put on these markers on the object. So it's a slow process, but it's absolutely worth it when you're doing uh, commissioned work or really professional things. You need to use markers and you need to spend time on getting the markers on, but also off the object. So the other scanning mode is the feature scanning mode. That means that it's actually using the unique features of each object to track. So each depth image that is taken is overlapped with the previous depth image. So it's try always trying to overlap the mesh or the depth image on top of the other one. So the scanner is not using any markers. It's using the unique features of the object itself to track on. This in terms also means that you need to be uh, a little bit careful on what you're scanning. Some objects are symmetrical, which means that when you're trying to scan them, even though you have great depth data and great features, they are symmetrical, so the scanner can't know where it is. So this is a typical object that has good features on the front, but when you go back uh, go on to the back, it's getting a little bit more difficult. Now these lines are all good enough to be able to track on, but you wanna uh, make sure that when you're scanning, you have a lot of these areas with a lot of features in. So the feature mode is really good, it's fast to use, but you can't really rely on the data. Sometimes uh, you'll, you'll notice that when you get back home that, whoa, the, the scanner actually slipped a little bit. So that can happen when you don't have enough features and you think that you're getting a covered an area, but you're, you've actually slipped a little bit. So for anything critical, I would use the markers, unless it's a extremely uh, feature rich object, like a rock, for example, a really pointy rock or uh, yeah, something like that. So when you set up the software, everything you really have to do is to start scan. And you do that by clicking the green button. Okay, let's stop talking and let's scan this stature from beginning to end. So I'll show you that now. Now, what we have to do for this project is that in this new product, we'll create using the feature alignment mode. I'm going to use the standard scanning mode. Uh, this object I'm, I'm going to set as dark. And basically that is it. So when that's done, you can see here on the right side, we created a group one. This is where the first scan will be in. And if we need to fill it out, we'll, we'll attach another one. I'm going to target the scanner. 
and click the green button. There you can see we're now starting to collect data of this scan and everything in the green field is what we're actually scanning right now. What, it, what like the last frames are detecting and the gray one is what we have already scanned. I'm going to move around here a little bit, making sure to keep the laser dot converged in the same spot. I'm going to overlap a little bit here on the back, but I'm going to actually go around uh, the front and get the rest of the scan. Now, scanning here from the front, I want to try to get more of the face, especially by trying to aim the scanner from underneath. And now we're starting to move around the back. Make sure we have awesome amount of data there on the, on the skull and on the top of the model. Again, if we miss something, we can always add that later. Like so, and that should be done. So I click the green button again to stop the scan. And before we do anything, let's just have a look here at the data uh, up on the head and everything. Um, but let's stop here. And what we can do now is that we can actually add another group by clicking up here, add another group. This would allow me to actually turn the model around and scan even more of it. And we can then stitch that together. So again, I will be clicking on the, the green button to start scanning. And I knew that I missed a little bit on the head. So I'm actually gonna scan a bit more there. Now there are some mesh here, so we'll probably have to remove that um, I'm having something underneath the object that picks up. Okay, I think that's enough. Awesome. So in this one, what I want to do is actually remove here underneath because I don't want to have all of this uh, annoying noise down here. Let's see if we can get it all. Something like that. Just the left mouse button and then we can delete selections. And up here on the right, you can see we now have two groups. So we're going to do the same with this one. It's going to hide this one here. And we are actually going to try to remove here as well on this model, some of the noisy data down below. So what we're actually seeing right here now on the right side is two point clouds. Uh, it's illustrated by this symbol. And what we need to do next is to align them and then generate 3D data from that. So it's not a complete 3D model just yet. Okay, so we'll select both of these models here by holding down control. And then we can register them. Let's have uh, the first one as fixed and the second one as floating. So what you do now is that you'll, you'll uh, have to select parts that are similar. So let's go ahead up here, those two. Uh, let's say this one maybe. And Maybe something on the leg down here, if we have any good overlapping points. Maybe that one, and let's see, it should be that one, right? And we can also take one more here on the leg. There we go. So when that's done, we can go up here and click manual register. Do not think a little bit? That looks pretty good. Yeah, that worked well. So of course, what we can do now is to keep adding scans to cover these these areas that we didn't get. Um, but let's click OK. We can now generate data from these two. We have a few settings here. Uh, distance thresholds in millimeters, iterations, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm not really sure what all of this means, but this point cloud density, this is what I wanna uh, flip around because you can see how the STL file gets heavier the, the more I, uh, the, the lower the setting is. So this is the, basically the, the meshing of the points. But let's stick around at 0.5 here, click OK, and let the computer work. <laughs> OK, so here we go. There's the scanned model looking really good. So what we can do now is that we can select the mesh and use this mesh optimization. So that will uh, fill some holes and basically fix the model. So let's go ahead and process that and we will end up with a second mesh file. There we go. We have a little bit of a lacking area here. But uh, yeah, we can just add another scan to cover that. Also a little bit here on the head. But uh, I mean, this looks really good. Super nice model. Awesome scan.
this transmission. It's a pretty big object and my plan is to scan around it. It's, it's placed on the floor, which isn't optimal, um, but I will, I will scan around it and try to get as much geometry as possible and see how that is to process. I'm quite sure we will use several scans or several groups in the, in the scanning software to accomplish this scan. I'm not going to scan inside like the clutch area because it's too much work turning it around. But I'll, I'll test the same features of going around edges by dividing this into several scanning groups. So we have to merge those groups after the finished scan. So let's go ahead and scan this and uh, yeah, let's take it from there. So the first thing, this is a complex project. I did not use markers. I should have done that for easier alignments and tracking. But yeah, basically I use the wider settings and just kept on scanning. It all worked very well, but I mean, sooner or later I would end up with issues like this, where it kind of, here, that it kind of lost tracking a little bit. You can see that jump, and now you can see some duplication of surfaces. Now there's a great tool that you can just use Ctrl Z after you stop the scan, and it will keep removing the frames from, uh, from your sequence. So, it's not really a problem here, it's just that you end up with much more uh, different single frames. You end up with much more groups. I just wanted to show you that. I redid it and, well, it happened again a few times. <laughs> After all, I just kept creating groups and it all worked very well. And then finally it was time to start aligning the groups and this, this took a long time. I'm not gonna lie, it was a complex project. I should have used markers that would make everything much easier. And yeah, then finally, after a long time of finishing the mesh, the final point cloud here, a few million points, looks very good. I mean, if you take it into mesh mixer, you will see that there are some errors, some duplication of surfaces, but I really wanted to show you this because it is possible to scan with the free scan mode, but it's always better to use the markers. All right, let's try to uh, conclude this scanner. So uh, my conclusion is that this is a, um, really good hardware-wise scanner. It's, it has everything that you need hardware-wise. It's really good. It makes good data. You're getting good tracking. Um, so yeah, the optics, the resolution, the scanners, the features of the actual hardware is really, really good. And it's comparable to both uh, more expensive scanners, but also the ones in the same price range. Because we, we, we can't forget that this is a pretty expensive scanner. It's not for the typical hobbyist. It's more for the prosumer and professional user. But when it comes to the software, I feel like the Thunk 3D has a lot of work to do, both on this one and at the Cooper M20 I was talking about before. So it, it doesn't really compare with the, uh, with the typical competition that you can find. And, and I feel that's something that they need to work on. I'm sure that there will be updates on the software when you're watching this video, hopefully. So there's a few things with, when it comes to exposure. I want to have some real-time feedback on what type of exposure the object is. I also would love a little bit faster scanning, which makes it easier for the, for the tracking. And of course, the, the general user interface isn't that good. I mean, the features is basically the same that you get in any other scanning software. So don't get me wrong, the features are there, it's just a way of how you navigate them, uh, how you find the features, that I feel that they have a little bit more to work on. But if you're pushing prices and you're pushing features, I mean, it's, it, it's a great value scanner, especially hardware-wise, but I want them to, to uh, keep developing the software. And if you're checking out the scanner, that talk to the guys, see what new features, see how the software looks compared to this video. And yeah, hopefully there are some new features that is as good or even better than some of the competition. But yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting scanner. And if you want to check it out, I have some more info down below. Yeah. So with that said, uh, make sure you subscribe, like this video, share it with someone else that's looking at a 3D scanner, and make sure that you understand that this is only a mesh scanner out. You're not getting a CAD model. You'll have to work with the data anyway. Um, yeah, if you have any questions on this scanner and on the scanners, on applications of scanning, please let me know, write a comment down below or send me an email. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.